on about on committee meetings. All right, directors, uh, no discussion items. Um, director's report. Okay, um, your director's report is behind tab six, mm -hmm. and uh, there are a couple items that I'd like to call out. Um, this past month has been unusual in terms of its weather, so our statistics are going to be a little skewed. Um, due to the closing. Um, we had three days that were impacted with our closures um, in, at the end of January and then um, early in February we had a day that we closed early for the ice storm. Mm -hmm. um, so as such our monthly statistics are a little bit off. Um, I don't think anything significant. Um, we, we didn't hear any anecdotal feedback from the public about the personal impacts that folks had, had felt as a result of the weather. Um, from a negative standpoint, I did receive positive feedback that we did close um, to promote pa patron safety as well as staff safety. So mm -hmm. um, I think that substantiated it. Um, all of our neighboring libraries followed the same suit that we did in terms of our closures. Um, there was an article in the Chicago Tribune that reported that information as well that kind of reflected that that was uh, the case with all the libraries in the area. Mm -hmm. um, there was a national article um, in the Library Journal that talked about the closures as well. And what was interesting about that is it characterized the closures here in Illinois, but it pointed out that um, the libraries in my home state of Minnesota all chose to stay open in these conditions. <laughs> um, you know, it, it think, culture will vary from state to state because right. a little snowstorm in the south can have a massive impact, whereas a small store, snowstorm here would not. Um, but in any event, um, it, this is kind of it's seeming to be a trend um, that the weather is a little bit different these days. Um, so it's something that we're going to continue to monitor. I think we need to put in um, some thought about how we're going to handle procedures going forward with weather events related to this and just at what point we're going to pull the trigger on, on actually fully closing the library or if we would elect to operate with a smaller staff or, or how we would um, continue to serve the, the, the community mm -hmm. and their expectations for service um, in weather conditions like this. So um, something I definitely want to study a little bit more and, and we'll continue to report back to you as we an analyze that. I, I like the idea that one thing that we did is we, we sort of knew, okay, you know, it's 20 degrees below, <laughs> 25 degrees, yeah. everybody stay home. But then it, it wasn't completely clear when it was going to lift and was it going to be safe. So there was a late start. And I thought that was a good mm -hmm. compromise, like, you know, not having to say, all right, well, I guess we better shut it out. It's still 20 degrees below zero, but me, but the late start turned out to be the right kind of compromise between that. And, and schools do that sometimes, too. So I thought that was sort of a good way to balance when you don't know for sure <laughs> whether it's going to be above or below 20 degrees below zero. <laughs> You know, there have been some confusion and discussion about um, what role a public library serves in its community as a warming center. Um, the public library, Wilmette Public Library, is not a warming center. Um, we serve as a warm place for the public to go during our regular op open hours, mm -hmm. um, but we do not have the facilities or capability to function as a full-fledged warming center. We don't have the ability to house cots. We don't mm -hmm. have staff that we can call in to keep the building warm overnight for people. Um, it is something that we could analyze. Um, there are only two libraries in the Chicagoland area that function as such, and those are the uh, municipal libraries of Cicero and Berwyn. Um, there are other county resources um, in the area that serve this capacity. Capacity. Uh, the police and fire department in this local event um, were the ones that served as warming centers for our mm -hmm. community. Um, so it's just another thing for us to be aware of. I think there, there might have been some confusion in the media in terms of reporting what, what role um, different government entities serve in terms of um, their service in, in, a, in these types of weather conditions. I don't think it was this time. I think it was a couple, about a year and a half ago, it'd be a winter, when I think the village they, they sort of made an mm -hmm. announcement without really even thinking about it. Oh, we are a warming center. And we sort of said, hmm, we're not aware that this is true. Uh, yeah, something definitely need to clarify mm -hmm. before I mean, we have another situation. Yes, as you situation. said, you know, during our regular hours, which are long, yeah. um, you know, and if, if we're open, you know, then obviously people, mm -hmm. you know, come here and warm up, go sit by our fireplace. Mm -hmm. uh, Right, more so but the library not, served as a, as, a, as a power source when, when storms have hit the area and right. the library has stayed intact, um, the people come here to kind of... But we're not, right. Right. And then I'm curious if, if, you've, if you're having any conversations going forward or someone in the library is having conversations with someone at the police department or the fire department to get a sense of how many people they had to accommodate 
um, over these last two instances to see again if there if they were if they had a lot of people and maybe there is a need for the library to look into it more or or that they were more than they could more than adequately cover the, yeah. mm -hmm. the co you know, what was needed. So. Okay. Okay. So, um, like I said, we'll continue to study that. Um, with relation to monthly statistics and so on, um, it's come to my attention recently that um, we've, uh, in the past year, made an administrative decision to curtail daily collection of certain statistics. Um, when it was brought to my attention that um, I needed to select a week for which we would collect our quarterly statistical data, um, I realized that we needed to reevaluate the way that we were collecting our statistical uh, data. Um, Th that's kind of related to my conversation about the closing, because um, if you look at our monthly circulation statistics here, it's a snapshot for the current month. We don't show any trending data. We don't show what December circulation was. We don't show mm -hmm. what January 2018 statistics are. So what I'm working with administrative staff right now is to develop a template form that we can use going forward so that you'll be aware. How are we trending? How are we performing month on month? How are we performing year on year? Mm -hmm. um, so that we can study that data a little bit more clearly and see if there's anything that we can do to um, either improve those statistics or confirm that we're going in the right direction. Um, so that's kind of one of the things that I brought forward. Um, we've been discussing this with leadership as well to see, you know, is there trending information that we can study that um, will help us to make more data-driven de decisions going forward? Mm -hmm. um, uh, door counts obviously are one of the things that we are looking at with unusual weather conditions, um, but also traffic at our service desks to see do we have the appropriate level of staff there to serve the public at all hours of the day, are we allocating all of our resources appropriately. So as a new leader in the organization, that that's information that's going to be valuable to me to help inform you and the staff on the types of direction we want to take going forward. So I just wanted to apprise you that um, hopefully beginning next month we can give you a little bit more data that you can study um, and see just kind of what our trending has been. Right. Great. And I noticed that you um, mentioned in your director's report also about um, staff training on some new, it sounded like software that would be tracking um, usage just so we can look at our collection and evaluate what's being used more and less and all that. So can you give us a little bit of explanation about yeah. what that is? Yeah, so um, CCS is offering a resource that is a, a standalone um, data analytics tool that sits on top of the Polaris ILS. Um, so basically what this resource will do is it provides um, additional reporting tools to the library um, as an end user to analyze different elements of our collection. And you can get data in a very granular level. There are so many fields within the database um, that would allow us to cross-reference um, other data within the, within the database. So what we can do is look at individual collections and see how they're performing, uh, check last, last activity date, check accession date, um, and then map that over a period of time. Um, and that will help to inform our selection, deselection, uh, the quality of the collections that we have, how current certain areas are. Um, it's going to give us a, a better snapshot of just what our collection looks like today and how well it's performing. Mm -hmm. And that will help us to make good decisions for how we allocate space for those collections going forward. Uh, traditionally, has the staff received a mid-year review or is that an addition? That's a, that's a new addition, yes. Okay. So with our personnel evaluation process this year, we've added a mid-year check-in. Okay. And how detailed will that be based on, so you've got two reviews, you've got the end of the year, year and the mid-year. So talk to me a little bit about how that's going to work. All right, so the, the mid-year review is more of a goal progress meeting, is mm -hmm. to say, you know, at the, at the annual review, we, we set goals for you, we identified certain performance factors. The mm -hmm. mid-year is to ensure that nothing is going to be a surprise to the employee when they get to their annual review process. It ensures that while there may be uh, monthly one-on-one -on -one check-ins or there may be verbal check-ins, we've at least got a formal mm -hmm. uh, meeting that we can uh, document that there's been a, uh, a check-in. And what are the months that those are taking place? So right now we're doing the annual review process. Mm -hmm. um, and we're aiming to complete that by the end of February. Some mm -hmm. of us get an exception. Mm -hmm. um, and the mid-year check-in would then be about six months from now, so August would be the okay. mid-year. Okay. And they're not tied to um, any increases or merit or any of that, so it's mm -hmm. um, just specific evaluation. Mm -hmm. Are you still using the same tool, or have the tools changed at all? The tool is essentially the same as what we've had in the past. <coughs> the form is, is laid out a little bit differently. It's qualitative. Okay. And then I see you went to the Wilmette Leaders Group on Valentine's Day. I so did. How was that? That was lovely. In terms of what's going on among <laughs> your peers. 
Um, the Wilmet Leaders Group is um, comprised of the executive leaders of the government entities within our community. So it's the, uh, the village, police and fire, the local school districts, and the library. Um, I found that experience to be truly exceptional. Um, this group is, is, uh, was brought together by the Charmed Foundation um, and is a facilitated group that is led by a member of the Charmed Foundation. Um, the, the culture of that group is that what we discuss in that meeting stays in that meeting room. Mm -hmm. um, it, we're meant as a support group to one another and to mm -hmm. apprise one another of the business of our organizations and how we can uh, work more collaboratively and facilitate intergovernmental cooperation. Um, I'm, I've been really excited about that meeting, was glad to have it, and I've already met a number of the members of that group. Um, so it's, it's been a great experience. I'm looking forward to it. Good. Okay. Um, a couple other things I just want to bring your attention to really briefly um, from my report. Um, we will be closed on Friday, March 1st for Staff Institute Day. Uh, the theme of that day is... Um, for the most part, I'm going to call the theme of the day is safety. We've got a representative from the fire department who is going to come um, give a presentation to us about fire safety, as well as um, orient us to our internal procedures for fire drills. Um, we'll oversee a fire drill where we'll actually um, go to a pull station. We'll initiate the fire drill, um, so we'll get to actually hear all the alarms go off and then follow our internal procedures. Um, we'll be based in our individual departments and then follow all of our procedures to check around the building before we exit. Um, we'll have a unification point that we'll go to, check in with one another, make sure that we've accounted for everyone, and then we'll come back in and do a full review of how we followed our procedures, if there's any opportunity to improve, um, and address any questions um, and suggestions that the fire department may have for us. We're also having a presentation from um, Officer Pavley, who is the school liaison um, for Wilmette. He puts together the active shooter drills and policing programs for our, the school districts. Um, he's gonna be giving us a presentation about safety in the library, and this is um, our first step into implementing um, an emergency response plan for the library. Mm -hmm. um, we're gonna kinda dip our toe in the water with that. I've already walked through the building um, with uh, the officer and a commander from the police department to address um, some low-hanging fruit um, type issues uh, to mm -hmm. improve safety around the building. So that's one of my early goals for the library as well is to implement that. And you'll see that reflected in my goals too. Mm -hmm. um, so that's part of the theme for Staff Institute Day. Um, this coming Saturday, we've got a really excellent event that we're looking forward to. Um, our first Maker Fest mm -hmm. is going to be this Saturday from 10:30 to 2:30. We've got eight community partners, and we've got a whole host of uh, interactive um, events that are going around that. Um, highly encourage you to come by and check it out. Uh, we've got interactive video games and music, basket weaving, um, coding, uh, snap circuits, light up origami, knitting and fiber arts, collages, um, electronic deconstruction, collaborative building, button making, vinyl cutter stickers, and more. Um, it's going to be a fun time. We expect a crowd. It's going to be going to be Is a great it experience. All over the library. Um, it will be um, scattered okay. throughout the building, primarily in the lower level in the auditorium. And what is it like chronic deconstruction? I saw that on the. Yeah. So basically, like if you were to take your cell phone or an old VCR <laughs> or something and just crack it open and see what all the circuits look like inside and okay. see what parts make it work. And I know many events on the calendar now, there's an RSVP button. For this one, it did not have RSVP, so it's right. just... It's drop in. Okay. Yep, and the, all, all the activities will be going on all day. Great. I'm there. <laughs> Great. <laughs> um, and then the last item I wanted to bring you um, up to date is we have an opportunity, uh, a vacancy for a full-time cataloging librarian position. Um, our previous cataloger um, was part-time, and after analyzing this position, we thought it would be valuable to make this position full-time. Uh, to build in some extra support for our technical services mm -hmm. department. Um, and this position also has an opportunity then to work at a public service desk so that our cataloger can be aware of how the public is using the collections and mm -hmm. discovering the collection through the catalog and so on. So um, we're excited for that. Um, we're collecting applications for that as we speak. Is there, do you have any questions about anything else in the director's report? Um. Then we can move on to the other two documents. Yeah. That are right, the other two documents. <laughs> Maybe I should talk about that because I was the one who sort of visited. You know. um, I'm glad it's in here, whoever's idea I mean, was. The, I'm glad the The documents was in that here. I'm yeah. talking about yeah. are the director's suggested goals. Yeah. And um, 
in the past with Ellen, as you know, uh, we, Ellen presented goals for our review. Um, it was sometimes a two or three month back and forth on the goals. Um, but the point was, is to sort of get everybody on the same page mm -hmm. uh, and also to have something to look at at year end when it comes time for the board to evaluate the director. <coughs> um, Anthony has, will have been here in May and June, which is the time frame. You know, long enough, I think, you know, we've got a six month, but you know, reasonable time to do a director. You and I will not be here for that, but I think uh, it is fairest for the board and for Anthony, for everybody to have that opportunity to sit down and, and do that. So with that, I said, okay, Anthony, give us some goals. And he nicely put it into sort of like, well, one we knew from like day one, the outdoor renovation project was, was a clear goal. And that's quite frankly, moving along nicely. The rest of these, uh,